In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today we're gathered to celebrate Friday of the eighth week of ordinary time. And as we gather in God's presence, let us be mindful of our sins and ask for God's mercy and healing in our lives. Lord Jesus, he heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, he came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Now will I praise those godly men, our ancestors, each in his own time. But of others there is no memory, for when they ceased, they ceased. And they are as though they had not lived, they and their children after them. Yet these were also godly men, whose virtues have not been forgotten. Their wealth remains in their families, their heritage with their descendants. Through God's covenant with them, their family endures, their posterity for their sake. And for all time, their progeny will endure. Their glory will never be blotted out. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple area. He looked around at everything, and since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing from a distance a fig tree in leaf, He went over to see if he could find anything on it. But when he reached it, he found nothing but leaves. It was not the time for figs. And he said to it in reply, May no one ever eat of your fruit again. And his disciples heard it. They came to Jerusalem, and on entering the temple area, he began to drive out those selling and buying there. He overturned the tables of the money changers, and the seats of of those who were selling doves. He did not permit anyone to carry anything through the temple area. Then he taught them, saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, but you have made it a den of thieves. 
The chief priests and the scribes came to hear of it, and were seeking to put, oh, seeking a way to put him to death. Yet they feared him, because the whole crowd was astonished at his teaching. When evening came, they went out of the city. Early in the morning, as they were walking along, they saw the fig tree withered to its roots. Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. Jesus said to them in reply, Have faith in God. Amen, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it shall be done for him. Therefore, I tell you all that you ask for in prayer. Believe that you will receive it, and it shall be yours. When you stand to pray, forgive anyone against whom you have a grievance, so that your Heavenly Father may in turn forgive you your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Is Jesus allowed to have a bad day? When we humans have a bad day, it can either be because events that we think are bad happen to us, or we might simply wake up on the wrong side of the bed with a really bad attitude, and we're overly sensitive to just the normal daily stuff that just somehow irritates us and gives us a sense of a bad day. So when we're having a bad day, we sense that something is off. I would imagine this particular gospel passage, if we were one of the apostles, it might disturb us greatly, because Jesus does not seem to be himself. And in a way, that kind of scares you, because if God goes out of his mind, it's really a bad day for the rest of us. So Jesus comes along, and he curses a fig tree on which there's no fruit when it's out of season. This is the same... Jesus, who gives us the parable about a fig tree that is not is barren for a couple of years and gives a case for, give it some more time, cultivate it, maybe it will produce fruit. A message of patience and endurance. And yet here, Jesus, the Son of God, who should know better, is looking for fruit out of season. A, that doesn't add up. B, the Son of God is now cursing a tree having a conversation with it, not a conversation, just cursing it, again, that doesn't add up to our sense of who Jesus is and what it's all about. Then they go to the temple, and Jesus throws basically a temple tantrum in the temple. Now, we might step back and say, well, this is righteous anger. He's upset because there's issues going on in the temple area. But what happened to that erudite 12-year-old that was holding the scholars spellbound? in the temple area. Couldn't he have dealt with this in another way? So Jesus is showing a emotional side, and maybe that's how we're made in the image and likeness of God, that he shares those same feelings that we have. Ultimately, I think that this conglomeration of scenes in this gospel passage kind of leaves us on the edge of our seats. What is he really saying here? What's really going on? Did Jesus really curse a tree and wither it to its roots for lack of not producing fruit in the right season? Seems unfair, almost unjust. But if we take ourselves back and realize that this is perhaps a metaphor for a situation, how long are you supposed to let a tree go barren? Isn't it supposed to produce fruit? Isn't that why we are here? Jesus goes after the people that are running the temple because he believes it's supposed to be a place of prayer. that's supposed to be life-giving. It's supposed to be producing a certain type of fruit. And the people that were in control were busying themselves with stuff that didn't really matter, was inappropriate for the temple area. I wonder what would happen if Jesus was around today. Would he be coming into our temple areas, and what would be the tables he'd be overturning? What would he be trying to drive out of the temple area? Because odds are, we're still not doing it quite right. I would imagine there's a lot of ways that we are not producing the fruit that Jesus is looking for. 
We bank on God's patience, but for our own sake, we better be attentive to the fruit we produce. Trusting in God, we bring all our spiritual and temporal needs to him for the continued renewal and purification of the church in spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For policymakers, may the Lord bless their efforts to protect the dignity and sanctity of human life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For just and creative solutions to break the cycles of poverty, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an abundant blessings on our faith community, in our efforts to bear good fruit in building up the kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Alice Kowalski, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all our faithful departed, may they find joy in the presence of the Father, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions within the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, Compassionate Father, we beg you to look with favor on our petitions and grant them according to your holy will. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work in human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as a source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished a marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end, we acclaim. We. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, unto you. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only save the word and my soul's up.
Let us pray. Nursed by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in this present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks. Thanks.